So last week we brought back to life my $14 original Xbox. Feel free to check out that video by the way if you missed it. And now we get to the really fun part of soft modding it so that we can get the most out of this still very capable system doing everything from playing Super Nintendo games to Nintendo 64 games to ripping your Xbox disc to the hard drive, bypassing the clock capacitor, and even region unlocking the DVD player and letting it work without the remote accessory that it required back in the day. Which honestly I think Microsoft should have supported out of the box but We'll fix it for him, I guess. To do so, we're going to use the latest and easiest method, which works on all Xbox versions, does not require a specific Xbox game like before, and it is thanks to the new endgame exploit, created by the wonderful people you see on the screen right now. So without further ado, let's get started. So to get rolling with this soft mod, you will need two fairly unique items. The first is an Xbox original controller to USB adapter. I got this for about $8 on AliExpress while I was loading up the cart with the capacitors to fix the Xbox so I wouldn't have to wait the shipping time again, but you can also get on Amazon for maybe like $12, $20, which will probably give you faster shipping. The other thing you'll need is as ancient a flash drive as you can find. I would say this is actually the hardest step is just finding an old enough flash drive. I thought I'd have my bases covered with my 2007 2 gig SanDisk or this 1 gig that I got for free from like a military recruiting attempt when I was in university but the xbox didn't like either of those and it'll tell you so with either an error message or it'll start just pulsing the screen until you eject the flash drive but thankfully my wife had this even more ancient 512 meg drive lying around which the xbox gladly took and formatted right away if you don't have a graveyard of flash drives lying around you can always go on aliexpress or amazon and you'll probably have some luck there if you search for a 512 meg flash drive or a one gig flash drive it'll likely be old enough to work seeing as they're probably not making a lot of new ones of those, so they're probably old enough. When in doubt, I hope to just find a comment on the listing of someone who was trying something similar and said that it worked for them. Super side note, I should mention that you can actually pull the soft mod off without either of those two things if you already have access to a modded Xbox, and then you can just put the files on an actual Xbox memory card, put it in the controller, and run it from there, but I figure if you already have a modded Xbox, you probably know what you're doing anyway, and you can go that route as you choose. Once the Xbox has accepted your drive, you're going to pop it out and put it in your Windows computer. If it asks you to initialize it or anything like that, make sure you hit cancel. We don't want to do that. Otherwise, that will blow away the special Xbox format we just worked so hard to put on there. We'll circle back to the flash drive, but first we'll go ahead and grab the files we need for the soft mod. We'll pop over to the GitHub link in the description and by the download pre-built versions, click download. You'll see a zip file called Xbox Soft Modding Tool, and we'll go ahead and download that. Extract it with your tool of choice. I prefer 7-zip. Then you'll grab a program called Fat Explorer, along with the .NET 8 desktop runtime so it can run properly. Install the runtime, then extract Fat Explorer and open it up. Then we'll click Devices, click your device, then Load Device, and Mount Data Partition on X. If prompted, install the driver. And if prompted about your license, you can go ahead and click Start Trial. Your flash drive will now be mounted like a normal flash drive, and so we can copy over the soft modding files, which we'll grab by going over to our extracted Xbox soft modding tool folder, go to utilities, and unzip the end game zip file. Then we'll simply copy the contents of that folder over to our flash drive, then we can head to Fat Explorer and unmount the drive, and finally use the Windows uh, safely eject USB drive before physically ejecting it. Now we can head back over to our Xbox, plug in the drive, move the cursor over to select the USB drive, which will show as a memory card, and hit the A button. It should look like it's frozen on the screen circle, then cut to a black screen, and within a couple of minutes boot into the Xbox soft modding tool. On my first attempt, my Xbox hung at the screen with the red light showing on the Xbox for about 20 minutes, but all I had to do was hit eject and it booted right up into the regular dashboard. Then I read online that having other saves on the hard drive could be problematic, so I deleted all those because they weren't mine anyway. I tried it again, and this time it booted right into the Xbox soft modding tool after only about a minute, and from there it was just a matter of uh, hitting A as it cycled through all the install phases, so before I knew it, I was looking at a new soft modded Xbox. Now, obviously this isn't the friendliest looking interface, uh, and although it might be fine for some, I jumped straight to the skin setting and put on the blue default skin for now by pressing A and then A again to save it. Don't worry if it's not your thing, we'll be upgrading our dashboard even more in a bit. While we're in the settings, we can hop over to video and enable 720p if it's enabled, and hop over to screen calibration and make sure our Xbox is using the whole screen. Also, before we continue, I should mention that the actual back button on the controller does a whole of a lot more than the B button does on the controller. That confused me a lot when I was trying to navigate these menus, and I kind of forgot the OG Xbox had an actual button called back before it was called something like select or share or menu, so make sure you steer into that. That'll help get you out of a lot of menus. By that same token, another really nice feature when you have 
have a soft modded Xbox is that anytime you can use LR black button and back button all at once, which will escape the current application or even game you're playing and hop you back to the dashboard, just like you're on a 360 or an even more modern Xbox console, which is a super nice quality of life feature that we gain with this. Back to the Xbox for the next step, you'll want it connected to ethernet via its ethernet port. If you're like me and didn't have an ethernet port close to your Xbox at the time, you can get fancy and try to bridge your Wi-Fi connection of a laptop to the ethernet port of the laptop and then share that internet connection with the Xbox, effectively turning your laptop into a single port router. But it's pretty finicky and I recommend just moving your Xbox close to a router if you have that available. Once the Xbox is on the network, we're going to pop back over to the Xbox soft modding tool download link, head to the extras disk folder and download this ISO file. We'll also hop onto the extras folder and download the extras disk attacher dot zip. We'll extract that zip folder and move the extras disk ISO file into this folder that has the little sign that says put ISO here. Nice and simple. Finally, we'll open up either WinSCP or FileZilla, punch in the IP address shown on your dashboard home screen, use the username and password of lowercase xbox, click connect and browse to the E folder. Now, during the install process, the softmod tool did us a favor by backing up the EEPROM of your Xbox to this folder on the E drive, which is super handy because we're gonna need those files should your Xbox hard drive ever die or you wanna upgrade it. It's kind of like a, a fingerprint for your Xbox that the Xbox is hardwired to care a lot about. And so we should definitely back that up so that we have it for future reference. To do so, we'll pop into the backups folder and then copy that EEPROM folder in its entirety to somewhere safe. Perfect a Google Drive or OneDrive or wherever you won't delete files randomly in a few years. Then we'll head over to our applications folder and copy over our prepared extras disk attacher folder which might take a few minutes depending on your home network. It is about half a gig of data. When that's finished, we can head back over to the Xbox, browse to the restart or shutdown menu item, and then choose soft reboot, which sort of half reboots the system enough for it to check for fresh files. When the dashboard reloads, we'll head to applications and then open up the Xbox soft modding tool extras disk. That's a mouthful. Once we have the extras disk virtually loaded, we can grab some handy applications like DVD to Xbox so we can make digital backups of our games, as well as DVD X V2, which both region unlocks your DVD player and lets you play them without the dumb DVD remote dongle accessory. If you have it, more power to you, but this is for the rest of us. But my favorite thing to get out of the extras disk is the option to install additional dashboards, as we alluded to earlier. So if you plan to use your OG Xbox as an emulation hub to play Super Nintendo games and such, I'd highly recommend grabbing the XBMC EmuStation dashboard, which is one of the most popular dashboards, and I believe it comes with all the emulators baked in, so make sure you have enough space for it before you hit install. But if you got the space for it, for that, plus your game files, then go ham with it. However, if you're like me and want to maintain that nostalgic OG Xbox dashboard feel while getting enough bells and whistles to play your digital game backups and everything, you'll a thousand percent want to grab the user interface X dash. That could have been better named, but as you can see, when you head back to your dashboard, it looks very similar to the stock Xbox experience, but with a few additions and subtractions that let you get to your important emulation or application files, whatever you need to do. You can do, I would say, 80% of what you can do with the stock blue dashboard, which those weren't features I was using anyway. It looks a lot cleaner and doesn't feel like I'm straying too far out of the green flubber aesthetic that I was trying so hard to revive last week. Finally, let's do what we came here to do and put some games on here. We're gonna use DVD to Xbox, which lets us rip our games right to the hard drive. Hard drive? <laughs> the hard drive right to the hard drive for easy access and preservation. I'm planning to make a separate video covering all the various ways you can get Xbox games on your modded Xbox because there's a lot of nuances there, so let me know in the comments if you want to see that soon. After that rip is done, we can head back to the dashboard, do a soft reboot, head to applications, and here we have Star Wars Battlefront 2 running perfectly natively without my original disc inserted, so that can go in a box in the basement and we can play this on demand. If I missed anything or there's something specific you'd like to see covered in the console space, hardware, hacking space, or with this particular Xbox, leave a comment below and otherwise I'll see you next week. Files. <laughs> <laughs>